स्वागतम सर्वेभ्य सुहृद्य श्रीमान वेकटनाथ कविताकिकेसरी वेदाताचार्यवर्यो मे सन्निधत्ता सदा सत श्रीरंग पृथ्वीश चरण शेखरा जयंती भवन पद पंकज नम So let's go to the third chapter and uh, the first verse. One day, that Rangana Thasya Manyam Padukayo Yugam Unnatana Mavanatirnatana Mitra Chonnati. So let me go to the next verse where we have to start today. So we welcome you all for listening to the interesting ideas of Sri Vedanta Deshika. So. So we have to look at 41, the third chapter. Makuteshu nivishya dikpati nam padameva padipadya rangabhattuhu parirakshasi paduke padamtvam konubidheda vidyeda gariyasam prabhavaha. Let me recite again. मकुटेशु निविश्य दिक्पती नाम पदमे व प्रतिपद्य रंग भत्तु परिरक्षति पादुके पदम त्वम कोनु भिद्येत गरीय साम प्रभावा Now all of us understand that all gods, demons, human beings come and worship at the temple of Sri Ranganatha. They reach the sanctum sanctorum. Uh, imagine our virtual tour. So what do they do? What do the devotees do? Especially gods. So the leaders are leaders of the eight directions come. So Dikpati Nam, Dikpati, Dikpati, guardian of the quarter, meaning. The protector of the directions. So, direction in the sense, whatever is available in that particular direction, everything is saved by, sustained by the gods according to the allocation, portfolio, and so on. So, we always have the concept that Indra is the guardian of the eastern direction. Yama for the south, Varuna for the west, Kubera for the north, and then you have other four directions: southeast, north, southwest, northeast, and northwest. So we have Ishana, Nairuti, and Agni, and Vayu. So we have the eight directions. And in uh, the in the same concept, you have eight elephants, eight snakes, and so on. So Dikpati Nam. So when the leaders of the directions come to the temple, what do they do? They remove their crowns. So Makuta, Makuta is crown. So the Shatari is placed by the priests of the temple in the sanctum sanctorum. Makuteshu Nivishya. Now, putting Shatari, putting the divine sandals on the uh, rather, when you say crowns, meaning the crowns have been removed and they are humble, they bow down to the feet of the Lord and they worship the divine sandals. Uh, now he is addressing, as usual, 
Swami Vedanta Deshika. Hey Paduke, O oh, divine sandals. So whose divine sandals? Ranga Bhartu Paduke. Ranga Bhartu is in the previous half, Purvardham. And Uttaradham we have Paduke. So connect these two words. Ranga Bhartu Paduke. Oh, the divine sandals of Ranganatha. So what do you do? Tvam Parirakshasi. You protect all around. You ensure all around welfare. Parirakshasi. Pari around. Rakshasi you save. So Tvam Parirakshasi. Now, the beauty in this verse is all the leaders of directions come to fall at the divine feet. Padame Vaprati Padya. Padam. Anga Bhartuhu Padam. The divine feet of Ranganatha. They all come to surrender. So Pratipadya, reaching. So Padam Eva Pratipadya, reaching the divine feet of Lord Ranganatha. So these gods keep their crowns down and the shatari is placed on their heads. Uh, what is the result? Uh, the divine sandals, because they are placed on their heads, they, the divine sandals, they save the gods from falling out from their posts. Padam, first Padam meaning the divine feet of Lord Ranganatha. The second Padam is the post Padavi, we say in Tamil, Sanskrit, um, many other languages also. Maybe uh, you know, this word is used in other languages also. Padavi, the position, the status is maintained by the divine sandals. Meaning, now perhaps all of us know that um, all the gods will be frequently in trouble. Otherwise, they will not think of the Almighty because they are in heaven, Swarga. They enjoy all pleasures and generally, as we also do, when we are very happy, we don't think of God. So we don't show our gratitude to God when we are happy. And we say that we created our own happiness and therefore we are joyful. And uh, we forget for some time God. Not I'm not talking about everyone of us, but many of us. So when we get sad, when we have troubles, then we just run towards the God. Run to the temple. Worship the Lord every time. Say all stotras. While, you know, these two years, two and more years, of a pandemic that affected the whole world, almost all countries. So many people started praying. So that was the single advantage of a disease which is spread over within um, no time. So, there, uh, so many people suffered. Many people passed away. And uh, so we all started praying. So everybody wanted to know some new prayer. They wanted to avoid this uh, disease, what we call plague-like disease. And uh, we were uh, um, flabbergasted. We did not know what to do. While we, many of us are affected by this disease. And therefore, so we prayed, prayed and prayed. Uh, the whole, whole world was full of prayers by people. Uh, that is because of fear. That is because of uh, fear from trouble, future trouble. Because we would uh, contact any disease. So therefore, uh, so they they all were uh, praying. They became they became deeper and deeper devotees of the Lord. Uh, they they went to any god as they like. And then, in the same way, 
the gods are always in trouble and uh, i hope you have not heard so far we have not heard so far that the gods do penance have you heard indra doing penance varuna kubera yama agni vayu ishana and nairuti have you heard of these gods doing penance ashwini devatas ashtavasus eight vasus ekadasha rudras 11 rudras dwadash adityas 12 adityas we have not heard them doing penance whereas we have, we have heard a lot of demons doing penance take a long list hiranyaksha hiranyakashipu ravana kumbhakarna so many demons started performing penance and they were very much devoted to god they sought the help of brahma they worshiped lord shiva many many demons got many boons from them and therefore so they started giving trouble to the gods so the boons that the aim of the demons to get the boons from the gods like brahma and shiva were for giving trouble to the gods and therefore gods were always in trouble and therefore the gods come to the temple of ranganatha they worship the divine feet of ranganatha so in the same way as we know that divine feet are not different from the divine sandals so they come to worship the divine sandals and the divine sandals are placed on their heads by the priest of the temple so in turn the divine sandals protect them from their post status so so tvam padam parirakshasi so what is what is the behavior like what is the beautiful quality the good characteristic of such divine sandals now now he gives a <coughs> general statement konu bhidyeda gariya sam prabhavah great people are always uh, same in nature and great pe- people will never change their good behavior they will also be one in uh, attitude now you would have heard about uh, subhashitam in sanskrit uh, it's a small analogy so let us take it lightly also udaye uh, savita raktaha the sun is red in color at the time of rise at the time of sunrise in the morning you see the sun which is red in color pure red in color it is very beautiful later on it becomes yellow in color later on it becomes white so it changes the color the sun is red in color in the beginning udaye savita rakta raktascha astamaye tatha in the evening also now as you see uh, the white color turns to yellow yellow turns to red and then you see you see the sunset so when the sun sets it is also red in color so this is an energy for the good people so uh, how are the good people sampattau cha vipattau cha mahatam ekarupata great people will always be one in attitude they will not, never change and they will have good behavior just like the morning sun is red in the evening sun is red udaye savita rakta raktascha raktascha astamaye tatha sampattau cha vipattau cha suppose the good people the great people are in prosperity that means they are in a good position they are uh, happy so at that time they will have the behave good behavior and vipattaucha even when they get into risks in dangers when they are in dangers when they involve in troubles then they will not change their behavior good behavior sampattaucha vipattaucha mahatam ekarupata so the same kind of 
now you have a beautiful alankara, the embellishment, what do you call the beauty of the meaning in this uh, 41st verse of Prabhava Paddhati, the third chapter of Sri Paduka Sahasram by Sri Vedanta Deshika. Uh, it's a general statement. Kwa nubhidyeta gariyasam prabhavaha. So where can you see that the greatness of the great people will change? Bidyeta. Uh, they will not change their mind. Great people will not change their mind. Uh, now, so having uh, blessed the leaders of directions by the divine sandals put by the priests of the temple in on the heads of the gods. Uh, the greatness of the sandals is, is understood that it protects their statuses, conditions, good conditions. They remain in their position intact. So that is the meaning of uh, uh, this. Uh, so the, al the Alankara is called Arthantaranyasa. In Tamil, we have an equivalent, Vetrupur Vaipani. So this Alankara is called figure of speech in English. And uh, this is elaborately dealt with uh, at least to two authors in, a, in simple books and in simple terms. One called Jayadeva. He has written a book called Chandra Lokaha. You might have heard those who have studied Sanskrit on the what you call uh, poetics. They will understand this. And then you have another one with a, with a great author, written by a great author called Appaya Dikshita, an Advaiti to the core. He was a great devotee of Lord Shiva. And he wrote, following the Chandra Loka, following Jayadeva's Chandra Loka, uh, what we call the book called Kuvalayananda, Kuvalayanandam. So as you see the lily in the evening blossom, you, be, you become happy the same way you, as you see the figures of speech in the verses, you become very happy. Now, the example for the uh, what, what you call standard or definition for the Arthantaranyasa is uh, if there is a uh, change of meaning, if there is a change of meaning in the sense, so another import is given, another import is given, and uh, the definition says a general statement substantiates the particular statement, and a particular statement substantiates the general statement. Anushakta Arthantara Bidha. That's the definition. Bhaved Arthantaranya Saha Anushakta Arthantara Bidha. In single word, it's a defined. So, meaning it's a technical subject, and therefore the, the translation is also little uh, different, uh, which we cannot uh, imagine. Uh, rather, we cannot, unless we uh, read books, we, we may not understand. So uh, it means, uh, uh, yes, general statement will be substanti substantiated, supported by a special statement. And a special statement will be supported by the uh, general statement. That's what we call mutual support is given. And it's called, say, you say, so a special statement is supported by a general statement and vice versa. So here, the particular statement is this, namely, the gods come and worship, the leaders of the eight directions come and worship the divine sandals. The divine sandals are placed on their heads where they remove their crowns and the divine sandals save them and keep them in the same status, in the same happy condition. So the general statement is, The general statement is supported uh, when great people do not change their minds, then the padukas also, the sandal, divine sandals also, do not 
behave differently because they always protect the conditions of the gods who are specially here particularly called the leaders of direction so in the definition books there are some examples given and we can also enjoy one more from uh, kalidasa's uh, great epic uh, maha mahakavya so kumara sambhavam is one one of the two great epics written by kalidasa kalidasa is the greatest author who wrote uh, two ep great epics uh, out of five uh, in tamil also we have got uh, this uh, same type of uh, five great epics aimberum kapiyangal so also we have pancha mahakavyani in sanskrit uh, out of this uh, five two are written by kalidasa and uh, the first one was uh, kumara sambhavam kumara sambhavam is said to consist of eight cantos eight chapters eight sarga and it has been extended to even 17 and some people say that somebody else has uh, written the other cantos and added to kalidasa's kumara sambhava and as the title suggests kumara sambhava kumara is lord kartikeya who has been uh, born to the parents divine parents namely lord shiva and lord parvati so the eighth sarga ends with the marriage of the wedding of lord shiva and parvati and therefore we mean the title of the mahakavyam the great epic as kumarartham sambhavaha it is not kumara sambhavaha it is not birth of uh, lord murugan as we say in tamil so uh, kartikeya or uh, what do you call skanda so many words are there guha there is another name for um, kartikeya as guha also g u h a so this is this name is familiar in ramayana also as a tribal uh, he, he was a hunter whereas uh, guha is also a name for kartikeya uh, the son of uh, uh, lord shiva and parvati uh, he says beautifully or on arthantaranya and if you want to look at the greatest beauty of the embellishment called arthantaranya sir we must also have a reading of another great epic in sanskrit called kiratarjuniyam so kiratarjuniyam was written by bharavi a poet called bharavi and uh, kiratarjuniyam consists of 18 cantos 18 chapters and it describes the fight between lord shiva and king arjuna and finally arjuna was declared uh, victorious and lord shiva blesses him with the pashupata astra so now so you can take two just two examples very fast after that we will go to the 40 second now the definition book called as i told you chandra lokaha by jayadeva jayadeva is uh, there were so many jayadevas in sanskrit uh one of the jayadevas which you might uh, popularly know is uh jayadevas ashtapadi uh geeta govindam you would have heard about geeta govindam uh, lord krishna has been sung very beautifully by uh, jayadeva and, and it's called ashtapadi eight worded poem so that you would have come across whereas uh, this jayadeva is different he was in the 11th century and he wrote a book on uh, alankara he wrote a book on both al shabda alankara the beauty of the sound and beauty of the meaning artha alankara shabda alankara and artha alankara now he says hanuman abhim atarat he quotes ramayana's incident so hanuman abhim atarat kim dushkaram ki mahatmana kim dushkaram hi mahatmana so you can now this is a beautiful def, uh, example because this is the example for both type of uh, arthantaranyasa namely uh, so you have another meaning that is general statement supports a special statement special statement supports general state uh, vedanta deshika padukasastram 
forty first verse of, of Prabhava Padati also happens to be the twin example for special statement supports the general statement and general statement substantiates the special statement. Now here look at that. So Hanuman Abdi Matarat. So uh, having been encouraged by all other monkeys and uh, um, Rama, Lakshmana, and Sugriva, uh, Hanuman took the responsibility of uh, uh, searching for Sita and he crossed the ocean. Hanuman, Abdim, the ocean, Atarath crossed the ocean. And uh, so, what is uh, some great about it? Because great people uh, find any task very easy. Kim Dushkaram, Kim Mahatmana. So, great people have nothing difficult to do. Hanuman crossed the ocean, and therefore, we find that Hanuman is one of the great people, and therefore, because he was a bhakta, devotee of Rama. So, now we are looking at the Paduka uh, Sahasram uh, from the mouth of a bhakta of Rama. And therefore, he is Vedanta Deshika. And therefore, so Rama bhaktas are always great. And therefore, nothing was uh, difficult for Hanuman to cross the ocean. So, uh, you, know, you know the interesting story where uh, all the monkeys express their ability. And uh, no monkey says, uh, I can go to Sri Lanka and come back. Uh, the only one monkey was Hanuman, who was able to cross the ocean and come back with a successful trip. So he went and handed over the ring, Rama's ring, to Sita and brought the Chudamani from her uh, hand to Rama's hand. So here you find that. Uh, this is the what we call example in definition. So when you go to Kumar Sambhavan, now this is a very interesting introduction to uh, make Lord Shiva love Parvati. Parvati did a lot of penance in order to get the hands of Lord Shiva. She wanted to marry Lord Shiva. With the permission of her parents, she went to the forest to perform penance. Now, in this process, Indra wanted to hasten the wedding of, uh, make the wedding celebrated quickly, quicker than expected. And therefore, so he wanted to employ uh, one of the gods, namely Manmatha, to influence Lord Shiva to love Parvati. So, when Parvati was uh, serving Lord Shiva in the forest, when Lord Shiva was performing, also performing penance, then he was not very much attracted towards Parvati. Therefore, Indra called for Manmata. Prayojanataya apekshitanam prabhunam prayaschalam gauravam ashriteshu. This is the first verse from uh, Kumar Sambhava, third canto, third sarga. Uh, Tasmin Maghona Tridashan Vihaya Sagastra Makshanam Yugabat Papata Prayojana Pekshataya Prabhunam Prayaschalam Gauravam Ashriteshu. So, this is the first verse of Kumar Sambhava. Now, you may wonder how you remember these verses because we taught for 35 years uh, these, these kavyas, these uh, uh, books in Sanskrit. Great epics in Sanskrit. So, what did uh, Indra do? So, uh, Indra was sitting on the throne. He looked at the all 33 crores of gods in his assembly. You know, he, his uh, city is called Amaravati, and uh, his uh, uh, assembly hall is called was called Sudharma. And then uh, he had, he tried to see who will be eligible to. Help Lord Shiva love Parvati. And therefore, uh, you know, Indra <coughs> had the dubious distinction of having thousand eyes on his uh, physical frame. So all his thousand eyes looked at all the gods. Tasmin Maghona Tri Dashan Vihaya. 
away from he moved his vision away from all gods and his eyes concentrated all his thousand eyes concentrated on manmatha the cupid the god of love uh, so what is the so, so what happened was sagastra makshanam yugapat papata simultaneously all the visions of uh, thousand eyes fell on lord manmatha the god of love uh, this is a special state what is the general statement prayojana apekshitaya prabhuna prayaschalam gaurava mashriteshu so when the masters want anything to be done want some service to be done by the servants the, the masters what do they do is they will always give honor special honor to those servants who are capable of carrying out the task that he intended the master intended and therefore uh, it, it depends on the purpose of the task to be finished by a particular servant uh, indra called for manmatha and uh, asked him to send the flower arrow at lord shiva so the story goes for that. then you have another one interesting one uh, the second canto of kirat arjuni bharavi uh, here he describes bharavi describes an incident so you know the story mahabharata in mahabharata uh, the by the gambling game uh, by the rather tricks of uh, what's the tricks of uh, shakuni the uncle of duryodhana all pandavas lost their game lost their bet they were asked to go and live in the forest for 12 years and then in the 13th year they must remain incognito unrecognized by anybody and their presence must not be felt by anyone so they lived for they had to live for one year in the city of virata under the protection of king kal king of virata and when we were there so bima was a cook in the palace of the king and uh, you know the ro other roles so bima was very angry the very nature of bima is fury so he was very angry he wanted to hit duryodhana when he came there so he wanted to pluck out a tree outside the assembly hall and hit duryodhana on the head he was so so much uh, he was in a hurry and yudhishthira calmed him down so it's a very famous uh, quotation from kirat arjuna and uh, many people quote it uh, in their lectures sagasa vidadhi tana kriya abhivekah parama padam padam viridute hi vimrishya karinah guna lubdhaha sampadaha no so there, there are two statements here and both of them are almost uh, uh, general statement and that's the beauty here so uh, yudhishthira advised bima not to be in a hurry to kill duryodhana because within one year their presence will be recognized and therefore he said sagasa vidadhi tana kriya don't do any action hastily so how do how should we do we must all do our actions with the second thoughts uh, at least twice we think before uh, doing any action uh, look before you leap is a proverb in english so before you jump into the water bed you please understand the depth of the water reservoir so these are all some so here so you find that he said to register advised me not to be in a hurry sagasa vidadi tana kriya so bima asked what if what if i do this now um, um, parama padam padam so it will land you in very great trouble we will be in soup he said so we all will be asked to go for 
the forest life for again 12 years and again one year of cognito, Ajnata Vasa. Uh, and he advised positively, uh, one who thinks twice before doing any action. Vimurshi, Vimurshya Karinam, Unaluddhaha, Sayameva Sampadaha. The prosperity chooses a person who thinks before doing any action. So this particular verse has got what you call Arthantaranyasa and the Alankara, the beauty, and therefore in the same way you find the I recite the 41st verse. Makuteshu nivishya dikpati inap adameva pratipadya ranga bhartuhu parirakshati paduke padam tvam kvanubhidyeda gariya sam prabhavaha. We see the 42nd verse. Jagatam abhirakshane trayanam adhikaram manipaduke vahantyo vivayof parikarma koti lagnam. Charanadvam Dvamavaimi Ranga Bhartuhu. So Vedanta Deshikal again calls the Paduka as Mani Paduke, as I explained to you earlier. So, O oh, gemmed sandals, O oh, the sandal, divine sandals with a lot of costly stones, the best Paduka. So, now, what, does, what do the divine sandal do? Uh, it has the right to administer all the three worlds. Trayanam, Jagatam. So, three worlds. Trayanam of the three Jagatam worlds. Abhirakshane. So, uh, already the previous verse 41 also is a sa, Abhirakshasi. So, it ensures the Paduka sand ensure the all-round welfare. So that becomes the right, adhikaram, the right of Manipaduka. The beauty of Manipaduka as it uh, itself accepted that the whole universe, the entire universe of three worlds have been protected, sustained by Paduka. They are now, even now, they are protect, uh, protected by. So, Vahantyo Ho, Adhikaram Vahantyo Ho. So, two divine sandals. Therefore, the Vahantyo Ho is also in Dvivachanam, what you call dual number. So, the two divine sandals carry the responsibility, rather, bear the onerous task of protecting all the three worlds. So, this is also another uh, beauty here. Two sandals protecting three worlds. How can it be? So, two is a smaller number, three is a greater number. And so the two managing uh, efficiently the good administration of the three worlds. So, Yuva Yoho, so two, you two, Yuva Yoho, uh, what is the place, what is the position of the divine feet? Avai me, I understand, I decide, I conclude. So Avai me generally means I know. So Avai me, so I know, I understand that charanat dvandvam parikarma koti lagnam rangabartuhu charanat dvandvam Lord Ranganatha's divine feet, the pair of divine feet, charana foot dvandvam pair rangabartuhu of Ranganatha. So Ranganatha's Two divine feet are only parikarma koti lagnam. They are just ornaments to you. Generally, as all of us must understand, that Ranganatha takes care of the worlds. And because, as you know, the portfolio of creation has been given to Lord Brahma, and Lord Brahma um, so creates. And he, it is said in Shastras, he uh, created, um, first tried to perform penance and create, tried to create. And uh, first, uh, the first instance, 
only snakes came out of his creation. Only in the third uh, uh, effort, he created human beings. And uh, it was said by Sringeri Shankaracharya recently. So here, so the creation is done by Brahma. The dissolution is done by Lord Shiva, so his department. And whereas Lord Vishnu's portfolio is sustenance, protection of the world. So in the protection of the world, uh, Ranganatha does it. Ranganatha does, I mean, carries out the protection. In fact, so we now say, transfer a little, uh, uh, move away, and then say, his divine feet are responsible for the maintain, good maintenance of the world. Then, so along with this uh, Lord Ranganatha and with the divine feet of Ranganatha, now the sandals, divine sandals are considered by Swami Vedanta Deshika, the author, to say that uh, it, uh, the Padukas also have equal responsibility like the divine feet and Lord Ranganatha to sustain the three words. Parikarma koti lagnam. Parikarma looks like an ornament, beautification. So, charanadvandam, the divine, two divine feet are only alankaras to the divine sandals. Uh, koti lagnam. So, among the many, among many ornaments, so the Divine feet are ornaments to the divine sandals. Meaning, so divine sandals are greater than divine feet. Now, these are all, of course, um, uh, what we call uh, novel ideas of uh, the author. So, any poet can have any type of imagination, of course, uh, restricted to the uh, limitations of the Shastras. Uh, Never uh, Vedanta Deshika swerves from the right path and he never deviates from the rules of uh, Kavya. And uh, of course, uh, he calls it uh, as an interesting point that he wanted to stress the importance of the divine sandals and, and therefore says that the, the protection extended by the divine sandals to the three worlds is... Uh, equally or, or sometimes better than what the divine feet and or, or Lord Ranganatha does. Uh, let's uh, go to the next one. Uh, before uh, going to 43, so let me recite again uh, the 42nd verse. Jagatam abhirakshane trayanam adhikaram Manipaduke Vahantyo Yuvayo Parikarma Koti Lagnam Charanadvandvavamaymi Rangabhartuhu So we go to the next one. 43. Padarakshini Patsala Nikamam Raghuvirasya Padambujada Pitvam Yadaso Bharatas Toyam Shavatvan Napunas Tadrisham Anabhut Vyogam so, hey, Padarakshini. So, when we say the sandals, uh, here the divine sandals of Ranganatha, we always say that uh, our footwear protect, footwear protects the uh, legs or the foot. They protect the feet. And therefore, Padarakshini, there are two meanings. So, Dikpati Nam Padarakshini. One meaning is it uh, sustains the status of all devote, devotees, that is, including gods, including the guardians of the directions. And now he, it also protects the divine feet of Ranganatha, Padarakshini. So, Pada, the foot. Rakshini, the protector. So he is, he is addressing the, the sandals. K Padarakshini. Now he says, Tom Vatsala. You are more affectionate. The word, of course, the 
comparative degree word is not there. Tom uh, Vatsala, uh, you are the most affectionate person. Nikamam, surely. Nikamam means surely. In, the, in Sanskrit, kamam also means definitely. Kamam. Generally, you would have heard about kamaha meaning desire. Asha in Sanskrit. And uh, so here it is, uh, nikamam is uh, surely. And kamam also means definitely. So, <clears throat> but this is a, uh, what you call indiclinal, avyaya in Sanskrit. So, tvam vit vatsala nikamam. So, you are the affectionate uh, lady. So, where? Uh, you are better than uh, the two divine feet of which God? Rama, Raghuvirasya, Padambuja, Api. So you excel in affection. You excel in Vatsalya. That means already in the previous 42nd verse, we saw Prayanam, Jagatam, uh, Adhikaram, Bahantyoho, Yuvayoho. We saw that. So the two divine feet take care of the three worlds very more, more carefully even than the divine feet and Lord Ranganatha. In the same way, so tvam vatsala raghuvirasya padam bujatapi you are more affectionate than the lotus feet of raghuvirasya. Raghuviraha. Raghuvira is the name of Rama as all of you know. Because Raghu was the, the great grandfather of Rama. Rama's father was Dasharatha. Dasharatha's father was Raja. Raja's father was Raghu. So generally, Rama is called Raghava, though all kings can be called Raghava. So because of the famous name of the king's race, that is solar race, many people come, came to be called after the ancestors. And here in the in one one of one. Rama was very famous and therefore we have another name called Kakustha for Rama. Raghava for Rama. Raghuvirasya. Because he was a hero. Because we understood that he was a hero. Uh, when Ravana asked the boon from Brahma, he was not, uh, uh, he was very careless about human being. And he, he never thought the human being will be powerful to attack him. And therefore, you find that Raghava was a hero. Ragu was a hero. Ragu, the word, the two letters, Ragu all, just means Rama. Ragu Virasya, Rama Virasya. Padambuja Dapi. Uh, even more than the lotus feet of uh, Rama. So you are Tvam Vatsala Nikamam. You are surely more affectionate. Why? How do you understand? You must support the view. From Vedantesika's idea must be substantiated, must be given proof. So what happened? So in Ramayana you find that uh, after the exit of Rama to the forest from Ayodhya by the boon of Kaikeyi from the Shratha, uh, Bharata came back to Ayodhya on the call by Vasishta. He knew with a lot of sadness that uh, his father passed away, Dasharatha. Therefore, he had to perform the uh, rituals, that is, uh, obsequies, the final rites for the father. And then he refused to accept the kingdom of Ayodhya, though it was intended by the second boon of Kaikeyi, his mother. So he scolded his mother. He took his mother to forest along with all others, Kausalya, Sumitra, the army, the subjects of the kingdom, all of them were taken to the forest. And uh, even Guha suspected that because Bharata came with an army, that Bharata wants to um, snatch away permanently the kingdom of Ayodhya from Rama, and therefore the, uh, Bharata came to destroy uh, these two. Rama and Lakshmana. It was a wrong uh, uh, assumption by Guha out of affection towards Rama. So Rama, so Rama was approached by Bharata and Bharata asked for his return, Rama's return to Ayodhya. 
Rama stuck to his guns because he wanted to make his father Dasharatha truthful, Satyasandha, and therefore uh, he never wanted to return back, return to the Ayodhya because the, the boon must be fulfilled. For 14 years of forest life, he underwent and then uh, what happened? So Bharata asked for Rama's return, he refused. So in, in the place of Rama, what did he do? So he gave the divine sandals. Bharataha. Now look at the words of Vedanta uh, Deshika. Asav Bharataha. This Bharata. Where is the proximity of Swami Vedanta Deshika with Bharata? Okay, how could Vedanta Deshika be near Bharata? Because he always visualized Ramayana happening now. Uh, as we read any book, for example, a drama in Sanskrit or in any other language, perhaps, when you read a drama in any language or drama, for, I mean, for that matter, any drama for that matter, you must uh, become one with the characters of the drama and then only enjoy. Otherwise, it is impossible to enjoy a drama, reading drama. Reading drama is not very interesting. You have to look at the drama. Witness the drama. When you witness the drama, then you become, you must become one of the characters. That means one of the characters must act so well that you must imagine that yeah, you have become one of the characters. Only when you involve very deeply with one of the characters of the drama, that means you can enjoy the drama. Otherwise, you cannot enjoy the drama. Enjoy a play. Uh, so here, Asav uh, Bharataha, this Bharata, as though Bharata is near Vedanta Deshika. So, Yatu Vich Asal Bharataha. So, what did he do? So, he took the divine sandals. Though he wanted Rama himself to return to Ayodhya. Tvayam Shatvat. Because now he is addressing the sandals. Now, Vedanta Deshika, the author, addresses the sandals. Tvayam Shatvat. Because the divine sandals are part of the uh, divine feet of Rama, his elder brother, rather the eldest brother of the Lord. So, Tvayam Shavat because the divine feet are part of the divine, divine sandals are the part of the divine feet of Rama. He was satisfied. He was contented. Bharata obeyed the order of his eldest brother. That is what we understand the policy in Ramayana. Pitruvakya Paripalanam he is obeying the parents' words. Guru Vakya Paripalanam, elders' words. So, Bhatru Vakya Paripalanam, this brother's words. Or any elders' words should be obeyed. So, Rama was obeyed by Bharata and Bharata took the sandals back to Ayodhya. So, Punaha again. Punaha again. Tadrisham Anvabhut Viyogam Na. Look at the letter. Na is to be joined with Na Punaha. Not again. So, Tadrisham Anvabhut Viyogam. Earlier in his uh, childhood, the two uh, boys, namely Bharata and Shatrugna, were sent to the uncle's house for vacation, for in, in entertainment, for enjoying the uh, grandparents' uh, affection. Uh, they went to Kekaya kingdom. And uh, Ashwapati was the king and uh, he was, uh, they were the two boys, children were enjoying the grandparents' affection, Ashwapati and his wife. And therefore, uh, when th therefore there was separation earlier from Rama. There was separation earlier from Rama. And now again, uh, when Bharata came back and came to know that Rama was banished to the forest, then again he felt the separation. And so his longing, for uh, longing of separation from Rama uh, was uh, uh, rather nullified by the presence of divine sandals with him. The, present, the divine sandals were considered lie, uh, by Bharata as though they are the feet of Rama. And therefore, Bharata served the divine sandals for 14 years and then he thought that he was serving the divine feet of Rama and therefore he felt that Rama was nearby. 
So punaha tadrisham anabhut biyogam. So he did not experience the separation or the yearning by separation by keeping the sandals with him. Meaning, the divine sandals are greater than the divine feet. Now let me recite the last verse. Jayati etiraja sukti, jayati mukundasya paduka yugali, tadavayadhana strivedim, avandhyayanto jayanti bhuvisantaha. Kavitarkika sumhaya kalyana gunashalini, shimate venkateshaya vedanta gurave namaha. So first verse, Santas Chiranga Prithvisha Charanatrana Shekharaha Jayanti Bhavanatrana Padapanka Jarenavaha. Thank you so much for your patience in listening. So, okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Srilata and uh, Shiva Shankar. Uh, participants, uh, uh, so many. Uh, so thanks to your wishes, but uh, if you want to understand the technical subject, you have to. Uh, watch the video again and again in the <clears throat> so YouTube as Vyoma's Linguistics Lab Foundation with the help of uh, the respected member uh, Lakshman Raghuram uh, will be uploading into the video. Yeah, Satyam Radhi V. Uh, let me. Yes, uh, we can. Uh, we can talk now, Satyam Riddhi. Uh, sir, yeah. uh, sir, in uh, 41 sloka, uh, uh, in place of uh, Raghu, uh, sorry, uh, Rangabarthu, in place of Rangabarthu, hmm. in one poem I am having, uh, Daitya Hantuhu is there, sir. Ah, uh, right. My, my respected father, uh, was, was a professor of botany in Annamal University, noted this uh, Pata Bheda. Pata Bheda is what you call uh, different uh, reading. This is different reading. Daitya Hantuhu. Daitya now, uh, that, that special word has been uh, uh, replay, uh, replaces the Ranga Bhartuhu so that, uh, so that you will find that um, one minute. Um, yeah. So, because we are talking about uh, uh, Dikpati Nam Makutesh, the eight uh, guardians of directions, uh, I told you in detail that the gods are always in trouble and therefore, what? No, how, how did uh, Lord Ranganatha or rather uh, Mahavishnu or Shiman Narayana remove their troubles, God's troubles by Daitya Hantu when when Vedanta Deshika uses the term Daitya Hantuhu, it looks more relevant. So Daitya Demon Hanta Killer, Killer yes. of the Demons. So instead of Ranga Bhartha, he is always repeated in uh, all, almost all the verses, verses of Paduka Sahasra. Because we are dealing with the Achavatara, namely Ranganatha in Sri Rangam. Therefore, uh, Daitya Hantuhu is more relevant. I, I, I appreciate you because you have observed the uh, uh, variant reading. Pata Bheda. Thank uh, you very much. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right. Good question. And all of all others can understand the good question of Satyam Reddy. Uh, because he had a book which says, instead of Ranga Bhartuhu, repeated. So, Daitya Hantuhu. Daitya Right. Daitya demon. There are so many words for demons. Yes. Not so, of course, 11 words, 12 words of gods are there in Sanskrit, as I told you earlier. There are so many castes among the demons. Daitya, Dhanava, ah, Rakshasa, Asura. Uh, what else? You can also supply. Yes. Uh, 
so many words for demons nishachara rajanichara now i think more than 12 words will be there in sanskrit i don't yes. know but uh, uh, i have not mastered the amarakosha i have not got by heart amarakosha had a aim. all of us actually as sanskrit scholars should um, memorize get by heart the amarakosha there are 2000 verses not less than 2000 verses but uh, they are in the form of shlokas uh, if you remember at least a few uh, then you can quote for lectures and it will be useful and people will appreciate you as uh, what you call discourse givers so uh, here i think uh, i must uh, admit that there will be more words for demons than gods because you know the number 33 crores of gods and 66 crores of demons <laughs> double double effort so It's meaning true. that we have enemies in our own physical frame in our own physical frame there are six enemies we don't have any friends in our body so we have we have not got six friends or more than six or less than six i don't know nobody said that there are friends in our body there are only enemies in our body kama yes. krodha lobha moha madha and masarya i think uh, no shastra gives us positive thinking that uh, we have friends in our body our manas is uh, mana eva manushyanam karanam bandham moksha yo our mind is to be attuned rather tuned to enjoy happiness and suffer the sadness uh, if we feel that we are in heaven that we are we are in heaven if we feel that we are in hell we are in hell so manas is the friend as well as the enemy uh, our mind heart thinking <laughs> thank you so much for uh, raising this part of it let us wind up uh, if there are no questions uh,